Hi, I'm Paul Kilgan from GK Tuition, and in this video, I want to talk to you about sequences and series. Now, the question that I've chosen to go through here is 2016 Paper 1, Question 9, Part A. In this question, we're told that in the first stage of a pattern, the point moves four units in a horizontal direction. It then turns left and moves two units in a vertical direction, turns left again, moves one unit in a horizontal direction, turns left again, moves half a unit in a vertical direction, and so on. With each stage, it's turning left and it's moving half the distance of the previous, of the previous stage. Now you should recognize that right, we clearly have either an arithmetic sequence or a geometric sequence. So you have to, the first thing you have to do is figure out which kind of sequence we're dealing with here. This, in this case, you should recognize that this is a geometric sequence because it has a common ratio. Okay, or in other words, it's go we're multiplying each term by a half. So once I know it's a geometric sequence, you should go to your log tables to the formula for geometric sequences. A part one of this question, it asks me to, to find out how many stages has the, has the point gone through before it has traveled 7.9375 units. So I want to know how many times has, how many of these stages has I, have I gone through before the sum of all the stages adds up to 7.9375. So they're telling me the SN, the sum of the terms is 7.9375. I know this is a geometric sequence, so I need to work out what's my A and what's my OR. In a geometric sequence, A stands for the first term. So in this case, my A is equal to 4. And OR stands for the common ratio. To work out the common ratio, it's any term divided by the previous term. So let's say in this case, I take the second term and I divide it by the first term. 2 divided by 4 is a half. So I know that my common ratio is a half. So I know SN, I know A, and I know OR. Which means if I sum into the formula for the sum of a geometric sequence, my only unknown will be n. So I'll be able to work out how many, term, how many stages has the point gone through before the sum of all the stages adds up to 7.9375 units. So I can just sub in here. My SN is 7.9375. My A is equal to 4. And in the brackets, I've got 1 minus a half to the power of n divided by 1 minus or, which is 1 minus a half. Now, let's leave the left-hand side as it is for the moment. And you just have to be careful on the right-hand side. When you have an unknown, when I've a half to the power of an unknown, I would avoid this. I wouldn't multiply out this bracket. The easiest thing to do for the moment is to just leave the top line as it is. So just leave the top line exactly as it is. 1 minus a half is just a half. Okay, so 1 minus a half is just a half. And then I can say, ask myself, how many times does a half divide into 4? Well, clearly a half divides into 4 8 times. Which means another way of writing this line is, I can just write this as 8 times 1 minus a half to the power of n. So all I've done there is I've got 1 minus a half is a half, and then a half into 4 goes 8 times. Now you should recognize that clearly we want to isolate our half to the power of n. Which means I should try and bring the 8 to the other side. Now in order to do that, I'm going to divide both sides by 8. Which means my left hand side will just be 1 minus a half to the power of n. While my right hand side is 7.9375 divided by 8. Which is 127 over 128. Now if I want to go further and I want to isolate my half. I want to isolate my, my minus a half to the power of n. That means I need to bring the 1 to the other side. So what I want to do is subtract 1 from both sides. If I subtract 1 from both sides, on the left I have 127 over 128 minus 1, which will give me minus 1 over 128. And if I subtract 1 from the right-hand side, I just have minus a half to the power of n. Now because I have a, a minus on both sides, I can just multiply across by minus 1 and change both of my signs to a plus. Now you should recognize, right, your unknown is in the power. So your inclination here would probably be that you have to introduce logs. And you can introduce logs to solve this, but there's actually a much easier way. So let's just continue on up here. So I have 1 over 128, and a half to the power of n is the same as 1 over 2 to the power of n. 
Now, my unknown is in the power, and I know I always stress in class, if your unknown is in the power, you introduce logs. But in this case, we can actually just do this one in our head. Or we can use our calculator to solve it. You should recognize that 128 is a multiple of 2. And in fact, I, rather than 128, I can write that as 2 to the power of 7. So 2 to the power of 7 is the same as 128. So I now have 1 over 2 to the power of 7 equals 1 over 2 to the power of n, which clearly means that n is equal to 7. So my final answer in that case is, after 7 stages, the sum of all the terms will be 7.9375. Now clearly, like, that's, the, that's probably the best way of doing this question, but clearly there is an easier way. You could have just listed out the first seven terms and then added them together. And the first seven terms would have added up to 7.9375. And you would have got your answer a lot quicker. But the problem there lies in, what if they had given you a massive number? What if the answer was going to end up as like 60? You don't want to have to write out 60 different terms and add them all together. So this is the more universal way of doing it that will work out in each case. In A part 2 of this question, we're asked to find the total distance the point can travel if it's to continue on in this pattern indefinitely. So if this was to continue indefinitely, how far is the point going to travel? So I have a geometric sequence, I know my A and I know my OR, so you should recognize that what they're referring to here is the sum to infinity. If this was to go on forever, what would all of these terms add up to? So the sum to infinity, the formula for that is given in our log tables. The sum to infinity is equal to a over 1 minus or. So in this question, I, I know my a and I know my or, and I want to work out what is the sum to infinity. Or in other words, if this pattern goes on forever, what, what value will, all of the, will the sum of the terms be approaching? So in this case, it's relatively straightforward. s infinity is a, which is 4, over 1 minus or which is 1 minus a half. So s infinity is just 4 over a half. 4 over a half just works out as 8 units. So if this pattern was to go on forever, the sum of all the terms is approaching 8. They'll be getting closer and closer to 8, but never quite actually get there. In A part 3 of this question, we're given the following table. Now, I, you'll notice that I've already filled in the values. I just want to show you what it represents. So in the first move, in the first stage, the point moves horizontally four units. In the second stage, it doesn't move horizontally, but it moves vertically up two units. The third stage, it doesn't move vertically, but it moves horizontally back one unit. The next one, it moves down a half, across a quarter, down one, up one eighth, and so on and so forth. What you need to be able to do is recognize the relationship between the consecutive horizontal movements. So if this one is 4 and this one's minus 1, how do you get the next one? So what we're doing to the horizontal movements each time is we're multiplying by minus a quarter. 4 by minus a quarter gives me minus 1. Minus 1 by minus a quarter gives me 1 quarter. Quarter by minus a quarter gives me minus 1 16th and so on. The vertical movement is the exact same. The only difference is that the first vertical movement is 2. Multiply that by minus a quarter, I get the next one, by minus a quarter, by minus a quarter, and so on. So now what we're asked is, so this will, the top, the middle row here will allow me to work out what is the final x-coordinate that the point is approaching. What is the value of the x, what is the x-value of the point that, this, that, this, that it's approaching. So basically what we need to do is we need to work out if this pattern is to go on indefinitely, this pattern is to go on forever, what will all of my x values add up to? So what you should recognize is I'm trying to find the sum to infinity of the horizontal movements. That will give me the x value of the final point. And then I'm going to get the sum to infinity of the vertical movements. And that will tell me the, the, the y value that the point is approaching. So now we can ignore the zeros because obviously the zeros don't impact on where the, on where the point is going to approach. If I add up all of these values together, we can just ignore the zeros. So if I'm trying to find the sum to infinity of the horizontal movements, I'm going to ignore every second number or, every, or all of the zeros. In this scenario, my first term, my a is 4. And my common ratio is one term divided by the previous term. 
So the second term divided by the first term is minus a quarter. Remember, your sum to infinity is a over 1 minus or. Now, I know my a and I know my or, so this is relatively straightforward. That means that if this pattern was to go on indefinitely, it's going to end up at a certain point. And the x value of that point will be calculated by 4 over 1 minus minus a quarter. So that works out as 4 over 5 over 4. And 4 divided by 5 over 4, if you just plug that into your calculator, you'll get 16 over 5. So if this pattern continues indefinitely, the x value will be 16 over 5. And now I want to work out what will the y value be. So it's more or less identical. In this case, to get my y value, let me just draw a line so I can separate the two. My, my first term in this case, my a is equal to 2. And my common ratio is one term divided by the previous term. So minus a half divided by 2 will give me minus a quarter. So I know my first term, I know my common ratio, which means it's going to be relatively straightforward to get my s infinity. So in this case, my s infinity is equal to 2 over 1 minus minus a quarter. And if you plug all of that into your calculator, it works out as 8 over 5. So what I've worked out is that if this pattern goes on indefinitely forever, it's approaching a certain point. And the point it is approaching is the coordinate 16 over 5, 8 over 5. And, so, and just make sure you leave your answer as a coordinate because the question said find the coordinate. It's very common that people will find their x and then they find their y and they forget to actually write it as a coordinate. So my final answer for A, part 3, is 16 over 5, 8 over 5.